we bring all their limits to the study.
Praise the Lord. I did go out to eat this afternoon. Amen. And I uh, thank the Lord that he allows us to do those things later in my life. And uh, I looked around and see all the people that are participating in those things. And it uh, makes my heart wonder what the world's going on through their mind as they serve us and uh, they do their work behind there in the kitchen and all those kind of things. Do you ever think about that kind of stuff? They need to know Christ, don't they? Amen. And uh, I suppose there's so many opportunities laid out there before us. But, but I think what it is, is I think people are just basically afraid. Do you think so? Yeah. Uh, we're a little bit um, concerned about how people might perceive us. Uh, we, can, uh, we can fool around and talk with them and have uh, conversations and such. But, uh, you know, I was talking about darkness this morning, and unfortunately, I believe that there's a darkness that overwhelms us in our lives. Yeah. Amen? Right. Amen. That's too bad. It's too bad. As a child of God, there ought not to be any darkness in our life. We've got the light, which is the name of Jesus Christ. I did not choose this time for this service this morning. It was just a matter of picking uh, up time. Usually my wife will agree with me, but... Uh, I don't know if she did this more than that. You say, well, why are you talking about all this stuff? Because I felt the need to talk, needful to talk to you. Amen. I love the Lord. Amen. Amen. I love this church. Amen. I love what God's doing in our church. Uh, I, I appreciate that God would have us to have so many going on. Amen. And all the other activities that we have going on in our church. Praise the Lord for the children this morning that my wife was uh, able to minister to the young ones and found out uh, some things about some people this morning. Uh, Brother James, uh, he played a wonderful snake. <laughs> I suppose you were the serpent. Did you scare the little ones? Couldn't get them in that food, could you? But you know, all those things that are taking place, uh, we need to realize this evening that it's a blessing that God will be using different people in different things. Right? Amen? And uh, wouldn't you like to be able to see this church continue to go forward for the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, accomplish all that God has set before us? Uh, I'm excited about the fact that we're going to, in the future, in the near future, start a pastor school. Pray for me. Amen. Uh, because uh, i got to find that energy. I went home, like I said this afternoon, I was really looking forward to looking at my eyelids closed. <laughs> I laid back, and um, I was gone. I mean, just gone. Now, it has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with, um, uh, I, I guess, when you do finally come to a place in your life you don't have that kind of energy, it really feels good to, to take a nap. But anyway, I feel, and I always feel uh, that I could be doing so much more for the Lord. And that I guess will never go away. Never go away. Praise the Lord. Uh, my burden is to see souls saved and souls go to heaven, souls being discipled. We spoke about that um, Saturday morning. Uh, we need to go out and get the babies that have gotten saved, and we need to go ahead and minister to them through discipleship. So my wife and I are going to be working together, that is, um, to put together, again, a program where we can go out and visit with them and uh, find out how they're doing in the Lord and see if we can go ahead and disciple them. Uh, and get them to know the truth of the Word of God because uh, it'd be a shame that some of those folks would be caught up in some kind of Pentecostal church or even some I know have gone back to Catholic churches. Do you know that? They get saved, they go back to a Catholic church and they get hooked by the priest. Yeah. Yeah. And by all that's going on. I mean, that's religious stuff and it, it looks good to people, but it's not the Word, it's not the truth of God's Word. And, uh, and you say, why are you saying all that? Because my, I'm concerned. I, I see what's going on. And uh, I see it probably more than most people because of where God has put me in my life. Uh, everybody's questioning what's going on in the life. Difficulties here, difficulties there. And there are a lot of difficulties, isn't there? And, and I'm going to read to you again out of Matthew uh, 4, verse 16. And then we are going to go to 2 Corinthians 4, 8. But you can be seated after we just read this one verse. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And that's what we're in prayer. Brother Sean, if you pray for us this evening, I appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Father in heaven, we give you thanks, Lord, for the day. We give you thanks for the salvation that we saw today, Lord. Amen. We give you thanks for your word. We give you thanks for salvation. Lord, we give you thanks for the breath in our lungs, and we ask that you would help us to use that breath to sing your praises all the day long and to preach your word to every creature. And uh, Father, as we come together in this place, hear your word preached. We pray that the pastor would have great energy, great zeal, great boldness that you would impart upon him through your Holy Spirit. That the message may be charged, that it may be spirit-filled, and that it may 
beginning to realize that. And I don't want you to uh, think that I'm uh, trying to discourage you. But think about who you are. Think about your body. Think about all that you have to deal with in your life. And uh, you, by the time I get done with this message, if you're not saved, you're going to want to be saved. Amen? Amen. Second Corinthians 4 8. We are troubled on every side. Yeah. Right. Yet not in stress. Distress. Right. Uh, we are perplexed, but not in despair. Right. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Mm -hmm. Cast down, but not destroyed. Thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. Always better about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Amen. Is that what it says? Yeah. Praise the Lord for his precious word. Amen. It makes me think when I read these verses, where am I with you today, Lord? I know I'm saved. Sure. But the Lord is really laying something out for me, saying, uh, listen, Hoops, I want you to know the meaning of life. <laughs> I said, well, isn't the meaning of life getting a good job and uh, having a good paycheck and raising your family and, and uh, having a vacation once in a while, being able to go down to Florida and enjoy the, the ocean and all those kind of things? Isn't, isn't that neat, Brother James, that we, that we can do those things? Think about it. A person, a human being, you and I, uh, we're always uh, trying. We're always uh, working at this flesh, are we not? And trying to figure out what is life all about. Back when I was working for Slumber's Age, what I had in my mind before I got saved, uh, and praise God I got saved, Amen. Uh, I thought about the possibility of owning a house in Florida and owning one up in, in the north where we did own a house. And I thought about uh, once, once I retired, that I would go down south for, when it was real cold up north for five or six months and be called a snowbird. I didn't care which one as long as I was going to be warm. You understand what I'm saying? And really, that's what I thought life was really going to be all about. And then after all that, then you would end up dead. It's really exciting, isn't it? Isn't life really exciting? Come on now, and I don't mean to discourage young people here, but... Uh, uh, I mean, we have all kinds of clues laid out before us what we're going to be dealing with in our life. Don't you agree with me? And, and if we look at the patterns of what's going on in somebody else's life, we can say, whoa, that might, uh, that might attain to me somehow. But we do believe that God has a design, and, and of course, with that design, He's going to do something miraculous in our lives. And I want that to be so, amen? amen. So let's look at the body, the physical body tonight, just for a little while. Just for a few moments. Now we can look at each other and we can go ahead and evaluate uh, somebody's height and somebody's uh, uh, stature, uh, somebody's waist size, and uh, somebody else's whatever. And we all figure that maybe either I'd like to look that way or I'd like to uh, uh, be able to wear that dress or wear, not, uh, excuse me, not me. If a man wants to wear a dress, there's something wrong with me. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, Amen. Oh. to wear men's clothing hey. together with me. Yeah. We have a lot of sissies today. Because of the men in this church, guess what? There's a little bit of rivalry going on. And what does that mean? Men are men. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And again, it's okay if you want to have a fist fight out in the parking lot, have that. Yeah. Amen. But don't do it in the parking lot, go behind the church. Right. Amen. Amen. We don't want people seeing us fight out there in the, on the front, uh, the front of the church on the pavement. Right. And uh, it'd probably be okay in the pavement if we could wash the blood away. I don't know why I'm saying that. But the body no struggle. Don't we struggle? Yeah. 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 Man, I'll tell you, the body is an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I, I look at my own body and I say, man, I can't believe what's going on. Sure. And so I'm looking at it and saying, Lord, how do I deal with this? What's going on? There can't be anything wrong with your design. Mm -hmm. After all, man was created by God, mm -hmm. was he not? Yes. And he has given me a mind. He's given me the ability. Now, not everybody has a mind. Now, mind you. Right. <laughs> not everybody thinks right. Right. Are you there with me? So, but nonetheless, I deal with that in the design that God has given to me. And, and I often wonder, Lord, uh, what am I going to end up doing with the rest of my life? I want to serve Him. But I'm going to take you to James 4.14. I, I think uh, I read that to you already this morning. Uh, Whereas you know not, what shall be on the morrow? For what is your life? Come on now. What is your life, the Lord is saying? It is even a vapor. I woke up at uh, 3 score and 10, couldn't believe it. Where did all that go, Brother James? Yeah. My daughter said, Daddy, you're going to be 72. And I said, no, I'm not going to be 72. I am going to be 71. It's still hard to believe that. 
Yesterday, a young man I was talking to, trying to lead him to the Lord, he looked at me, and I, and I looked at him, I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 25. And I said, uh, well, that's good. I said, how old do you think I am? He said, 45. I love you. Amen. <laughs> kind of sidetracked me. I want to tell him more about the Lord Jesus. I did, by the way, but anyway. What a blessing that was. I said, you're sitting over with your eyes, boy. But what is life? It isn't even a vapor, the Bible says. You have to hear it for a little time, and then it does what? Vanish the way. Uh, one day we're not going to be here. Right. My wife has already made uh, sure that I have a plot in the Veterans Cemetery. And, and I appreciate the Veterans Cemetery because uh, if I go first or she goes first, uh, we get buried in the same hole. Yep. Yep. Pretty good, amen? Amen. Uh, but I won't be there. Right. And my body will be right. for a while until God decides to, to pick it up out of there and meet it in there and all that wonderful stuff that the Bible says, amen? Amen. So um, I don't know what, what, it, what life really is all about. Do you? I mean, honestly, child of God. What is life all about? We all have an idea, don't we? It's not a picnic. I've heard some people tell me, my friends, that I can't wait to go to hell because I'm going to be drinking and partying with them in hell. If they really believed what hell is all about, they would not say that. Right. And life is not a picnic. Amen. It really isn't. You think about it, some of you folks have to go to work tomorrow, and I don't. I could stay home. <laughs> Lounge around and Enjoy the day. Amen. Uh, but praise the Lord, uh, God has uh, given me, at least these last days of my life, the ability to pick and choose what time I, I want to go to work. Isn't that a great thing? Amen. And you say, I'm kind of jealous. Well, wait to get as old as me if you do. Amen. And be in the ministry, and you'll be able to enjoy some of those things that God lets us enjoy. Amen. Amen. But life is not carefree. No matter what's happening in your life, right. even if you retire. I've had folks say to me, hey, preacher, when are you going to retire? I'm never going to retire. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to get retreaded all the time. Amen. So eventually, I will leave this world, and you will too. Amen. Yeah. But what's life all about? I was born. I don't remember when I was. you remember when you were born? I don't either. All of a sudden, I'm here. Did you know being born is a struggle? Not only was it for mama. And it definitely was for my mother. Did I tell you that when I was born, the doctor slapped my mother? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. You strike that away. <laughs> we often, and I remember going up when my daughter was having her baby here in, uh, up in Williamsburg, and, and that's how I got introduced to this church, and praise God for that. I, I remember uh, the struggle that she was having. Uh, they had to help her a great deal. And I said, man, if I was her, I'd never have a baby. But I'm not her. <laughs> but we often say, my wife and I said, I wonder how the baby's doing. I wonder how my daughter's doing. Don't, don't we often talk about the struggle that they're going through? And ladies, you, you have had babies. You understand what I'm talking about. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing. And it's really more difficult for the husband. Carly, yeah. it is. Yeah. Am I right, Sean? I mean, it's hard for a man to, to have his wife to have a baby. Depending on the aspect. Okay. <laughs> Our last one that was born, uh, they, they taught, the doctor taught me into going in with her. And I went in with her, and, uh, and, and I watched this struggle. It was an amazing thing. I, it was really amazing. I almost passed out. <laughs> She's having trouble breathing. I said, honey, breathe. The doctor said, don't tell him to breathe. <laughs> He's telling him to push. I'm telling him to breathe. And then all of a sudden, I heard that Matthew got stuck. And, and they had to get those things out to pull him out. You know when he, oh, oh, right. right. what he pulls And, and when, they, when they got a hold of his head, he looked like a cone head when he came out. <laughs> I told Matthew that's his problem. That's why I was special to come. I watched all my I watched all my children grow up. It's an amazing thing how they grow up. You know what I'm talking about, Gene. Yeah, they're amazing growing up and, and you watch them grow up and they struggle. Remember when they first start walking? Isn't that an amazing thing? The last child that I watched uh, try to walk was my grandson, uh, Hudson. Uh, I watched him as he tried to get up and walk. Amazing thing about a human being, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We're always struggling. Yes. 
No matter what it is, we're always struggling. Do you believe that? And we're always tied up in struggling and suffering. You say, well, I'm not suffering right now. I don't know about you, but uh, the way I understand it, the way God has created us, He's given us all this skin. And if you don't have it, there's something wrong with you. Right. I, I've got all this skin, and some of it's switched out, but that's okay. And uh, you think about even a little spot like this. Now, I haven't had so many needles all my life as I've had in the last year or so. Mm -hmm. but, but I thought about a needle and where they put the needle. No matter where they put the needle, the way my body is designed, that uh, no matter what area it is, I can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, pain is definitely everywhere in your body, where it can be anywhere or everywhere in your body. Right. So if you, uh, if you step, as I mentioned this morning, on a needle in the house, your whole body feels it. Yep. So you have all kinds of receptors in your body. Do you know that? Yep. No matter where it is on your body, it is being prepared for pain. Right? <coughs> That's kind of rough to tell you that tonight. Amen? Mm -hmm. Isn't it rough? We all have a network of nerves that go this way and that way. Some people have some people have fibromyalgia. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how true that is, but, but nonetheless, people have it. Mm -hmm. So they say that. And they have pain that they can't explain all over their body. Uh, that's tough that they have to deal with it on a daily basis, is it not? But God designed our bodies. Now check this out. He designed our bodies to have pain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You ever have a toothache? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the first thing you want to do when you have a toothache? You want to yank it out. Some of us have probably tried to yank them out. Isn't that true? Amen. I'm going to share this with you. Uh, I had gotten, when I was younger, got my teeth filled. You ever get your teeth filled? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that a wonderful project? Uh, they lay you back in a chair, and, and they shoot your mouth up with all kinds of Novocaine, and you don't feel it at first. They say, well, yeah, you, I feel it. It feels like someone's standing in my mouth, pushing that thing into my mouth. Amen? And then all of a sudden, then you have no pain, and you're biting your tongue. And, that truth, and then they get out that little ee. I think the doctor does it on purpose. He goes ee, 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 right? And then he gets into your mouth, and when he gets into your mouth, he starts drilling away at that cavity, and you can smell it. That's your body burning up. Now, you say, why, why, I want to share with you tonight about this struggle stuff. There is no gap with any place in our body that would suggest that we can't feel pain. Every part of our body feels pain. How do I know that? Because I'm a human being. Right. So for the unsaved, uh, listen, they're going to feel pain in hell for all eternity. Right. That doesn't mean they're just going to feel it on their tongue. That doesn't mean they're just going to feel it on their head. That doesn't mean they're just going to feel it on their toes. They're going to feel it in their entire body, day in and day out, whether it be a day or night. They're going to be feeling it all the time. Right. I can't comprehend that. I can't comprehend it, have, uh, having more than a half an inch of my body being burned. And some of us have experienced it, haven't we? Anybody ever burn themselves? My wonderful wife, I love her to death. She cooks for me and does things for me. But uh, she put a frying pan in the oven. It's got a handle on it. Amen? 350 degrees. What were you baking? I forget. It doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, she put it in the oven cooking something for me. She decided to get it and get it out. She grabbed the handle without a pothole. Now, see, that's what happens when you get older. See, you younger people think that you can always remember that stuff, but it'll get you. <laughs> it hurts. And, and she's an amazing woman. She burned her hand and uh, didn't cry like I'd have been crying like a baby. Of course, since she started running cold water over and all those wonderful things and. But I thought about it when she burned her hand. I said, what's it going to be like in hell? Right. Right. Aren't you glad you're saved tonight? Yeah. And, and if we have all these receptors and things going on in our body, uh, and, and what's it going to be like in hell when they're burning? Uh, and, they're not, and they're going to be in their physical bodies. You know that? Yeah, they're it. going to have a resurrected body. Not like ours, but it's going to be a resurrected body. They are going to be in the flesh. Right. Doesn't that blow your mind? And that should scare us to think about that poor soul that you may not like is going to die and go to hell and not save. Right. Now, I know that we might think that somehow 
uh, Hitler deserves to be in hell, and yes, he does, for all that he's done, but he could have gotten saved. Right. Stalin could have gotten saved. All those wicked men could have gotten saved. Even those that are leading countries like Iraq and Iran and what just took place over here in uh, uh, Syria, you would say, listen, those men need to go to hell and suffer there for all eternity. But could you imagine if they got saved? They wouldn't have to deal with that all eternity. That's an amazing thing. Psalm 139, 14, I want to take you to that verse. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully what? Amazing. You know, it's true. It's an amazing thing. Frank, it's amazing. Even though other people might not see us that way, wonderfully made. Right. But we are wonderfully made. Amen. Whether we like it or not, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. What does my soul know? That God has created me, and he has given me all these sensors in my body. In my body, why? So that I can experience pain. If you go through life without experiencing pain, you are going to have a terrible life. Yeah. You say, well, why is that? Because that pain that my wife picked up, if she didn't experience pain, she would have held on it for a long time, and it probably would have ate away at her flesh. You understand? Right. So pain is not necessarily a bad thing. It's a good thing. But I want you to know that our soul, our flesh, is going to struggle. It's going to struggle. I don't like that. Do you like that? Listen, I, I was uh, made by God to struggle and to love. I know when I was growing up, my mother and my stepfathers, they taught us how not to love. Love wasn't a real thing, and I think some of you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, when you say, well, love, well, love is misrepresented when it's outside the Word of God. Did you know yeah. that? Right. And so when people talk about love, it has nothing to do with the love that God's Word talks about. God has made it possible for me to breathe. That's a natural thing. And because it's a natural thing, that means that I have a natural desire to love. Amen? Doesn't the Bible tell us to love our neighbors? Amen? Praise the Lord. Do we really love our neighbors? We ought to. And, uh, and you think, well, I'm sitting next to her. I must love her. <laughs> you know, if we open ourselves up to love, and I, and I have to let you know this because of my, my life before I got saved, I didn't want to love. Didn't want to. You say, why is that? Because it hurts. Yeah, right. right. Sometimes you get hurt. You get hurt by your friends. You love your friends. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Sometimes they're even your best friend. Something I learned over the years. No matter how much I love somebody, I am not going to tell them things that I that I have wrong in my life personally. You know why? Because if I do that, I'm opening myself up to have my love and, and our relationship destroyed because of what I said. People just can't keep things to themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Yeah. And so you say, well, what kind of things you got going on, preacher? I'm not going to tell you. Mm -hmm. I, I have preacher friends that I would not tell them. They'd say, well, how's it going, Goose? And that's what they always call me, Goose. How's it going, Goose? What's going on in your life? So God is good. Now, I'm not lying to them, but I wouldn't tell them the nasty stuff. Right. Wouldn't talk about the people in the church. Never do that. Right. Never do that with another pastor. Never tell them. Uh, how, how this one is that way and that's one that that's none of their business. Can you say amen? amen. If we go on doing that kind of stuff, what we're doing is elevating ourselves and making ourselves look like we're uh, we're something special. I'm not special. I'm just full of God. Amen. Like like you're all full of God. You're all full of grace. Can you say amen to that? We know that God loved the world. If God loved the world, then He wants us to be able to experience love. Love doesn't mean that we're going to share everything about our life with somebody else. And you ought to be careful about what you share with other people. Amen. And unless it, you can, yeah, I mean, if it's somebody you can really trust, and you can't trust your psychiatrist, you can't trust anybody. Amen. Hopefully you don't have a psychiatrist. Amen. Amen. We've got one that's better. Amen. And more powerful. That's right. And more loving. Amen. That's the one that we should share the most deep, difficult things that are going on in life. Do you all agree with that tonight? Amen. For God so loved the world. Amen. So with love. Hello? Somebody loves us to be in my life. I don't feel like We pass through this life. And love is an important aspect of it. Pain is an important aspect of it. All that stuff is later. I mean, walking 
sometimes in the dark is a part of it. And as we walk through the shadow of death, as we go that way, we have to anticipate not only pain, but we have to anticipate love. Love one another. Right. As Christ loved you. Is that what the Bible says? Now you say, what does love mean? It doesn't mean that I share everything about myself with you. That means that I care about what's going on in your life. As well as you care about what's going on in my life. Not, not the details of my life. And you understand what I'm saying? It's okay for a husband and wife. It ought, to be, it ought to be nice that a husband and wife can go ahead and share things with one another. But you know what used to be a, a, as I was growing up? I remember my mother used to always call up my grandmother and complain about her husband, the one that she was married to at the time, and talk about him and say things about him that really bothered me. Right. I think it's absolutely wrong that a wife, and I believe the Bible would support this, to say a wife would call up her family and talk about her husband in a way that's negative. If you want to have a good relationship, and I know we're going to have struggles, I know we're going to have pain, but love doesn't allow us to go ahead and talk to somebody else about that person you say you love. Amen. We have so much of that going on, don't we? Right. You know why marriages are breaking up? Because the wife has to talk to mom or somebody else about her husband. Yep. Listen, work it out with your husband. Work it out with your wife. Right. Don't get other people involved. You know why? Because they're going to be on your side anyway. Okay. My mother's going to be on my side. Your father's going to be on your side. That's just the way it is. So keep them out. You know what I told my children as they were, at, after they got married, I said, I don't want to know about it. Right. Amen. You married them, you live with them. Okay. Amen? Amen. Unless uh, they start beating my daughter, and then I'm going to beat them. Yeah. Amen. And, and I already told them that even my seven-foot-tall uh, son-in-law, some of you might have met him, yeah. uh, my wonderful son-in-law, he, he thinks that somehow he can probably take me, but he doesn't know who I am. I might be 70 years old, but I'll tell you what, I'll pour out everything that's in me Amen. before I go to the ground. Right. And then he will know that he's been in the... Because why? Because God did that. Yeah. 
but so many of us are numb and bitter because of what's taken place because we can't trust God. We can't trust God to go ahead and deal with us in the way that He wants to deal with us. I, I grew up in, uh, I guess they call it Skid Row. You ever heard that before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grew up in a place where people just didn't love people. All they wanted to do was get something out of it. And you did the same thing, of course. But the only reason why they did that is because they were struggling in their life. We see other people shoot people. We see other people hurt people in different ways. You understand what I'm saying tonight? Right. Mm -hmm. And we, we're living in a crazy time. Are we not? Mm -hmm. Somebody could walk in this church at any time and have, a, and have an attitude towards you and I because of what we believe. Right. It opened fire on us. That's the terrible thing. And I know. I know that uh, we're not looking forward to that thing. I hope there are doors of life. Amen. Because <coughs> it could happen. Yeah. Could happen. But it's only because they're struggling and don't know how to deal with that struggle. They've been loved and they love somebody and they're hurting of that. And so I, I want to talk about our minds just for a few moments tonight. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we all have a mind, don't we? Yes, sir. Now, mine is almost gone. And it doesn't matter. Yes, Charles, almost gone. I haven't arrived yet. But that's good. I still have some mind left. You understand what I'm saying? But my mind struggles. I don't know what your mind is like, and I don't want to know, honestly, amen? But the mental part of my life is always struggling. I mean, that's just the way it is. And here, here's what it is. My mind is very sensitive. Isn't your mind sensitive? You're not always going to miss, admit how sensitive it is until somebody doesn't agree with you. Right. Until somebody is going in a different direction. Right. But you know God created my mind, He created your mind, and He made my mind sensitive as well as He made your mind sensitive. And my mind is alive and it's going to experience agony. That's the way God did it. Could you imagine being Jesus Christ when He had to go to the cross of Calvary and He said to the Lord, if it would be possible, take this cup from me. He was drinking the cup of bitterness. That means He was taking our wrath upon Himself. Did he not cry out to the Father? Yeah. Don't we have a mind that takes us to a place sometimes where we just have agony on top of agony and nobody else knows what it's like? We go to those dark places and hard places to live. You say, why are you saying all that tonight? Because I, we're trying to figure out what life is all about. Aren't we? You young people, and, and uh, of course, Ron, you're younger than me. So I'm quite a young person. And how old are you, 45? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I, but I look at you young people and I, and I praise God for you now when I talk about young Gene, you know what I mean 50 and below and, and I watch so many you all look like you're going to go to sleep I mean life is hard I, you don't understand preacher I worked all day yeah, I feel sorry for you I really do. No, I don't. I, my wife and I were just talking about this a couple of days ago. And this obviously sounds brain ghostly. That'll work. If it's not, I made it up. Anyway, uh, we were talking about that. And uh, she said, honey, you were never home. Especially when I started running the school. You know, they paid me a whopping, uh, I think it was $150 So we took all our money that we made at Schlumberger and tried to live off of that. That didn't work all that well. But, uh, I had to get a job. Did you feel sorry for me? Yeah. I had to get a I had to get a job where I had to work eight hours, and then I had to run to school. And because there wasn't enough money then, guess what else? I, then I got some side work. Wow. And you know how tired I was. I mean, I was so tired that I didn't know most of the time was awake or sleep. Mm -hmm. It was hard. And you all have it hard. You young people don't realize how much easier you have it today than what we have. Right. And I'm not saying that to right. me, but what do you mean by that, preacher? You can make so much more money than I could make back then. They were paying a dollar, two dollars an hour. When I got out of Navy, I got a job for a buck an hour. Wow. Remember that, honey? At a restaurant. That. You know what I did at the restaurant? Well, I don't know why I'm telling you all. Maybe I just bury my soul in that. But anyway, 
at the restaurant, I had to peel boiled potatoes. You ever peel a boiled potato? <laughs> I didn't do that to the neighbor. That was the chief petty officers. <laughs>
I'm going to take you to 2 Corinthians 4 8 again, and then we're going to close with this. We are trouble on every side. This is for the child of God. Yet not distressed. Right. If you're distressed, there is something wrong with your relationship with Jesus. That's right. There's no reason for us to be distressed. Amen. There's always not enough money. There's always not enough things that can go ahead and satisfy the flesh. There's always not a good relationship. But nonetheless, God said right here, yet not distressed. Right. Yes, it says, we are perplexed. Most certainly we're perplexed. This world is difficult to live in. But I like what God has said, but not in despair. That means that God will take care of every need that we have in our life. Do you believe that tonight? He'll fulfill what he needs to fulfill in our life. Just don't give up on him. Be faithful to him. Can you say amen? Persecuted. Now, I, I know that we don't know what persecution is all about, but yes, we do. You are persecuted on a daily basis by what you see on TV, by what you see on billboards, by what you see in your office, by what you see on the road. There are things that are persecuting you on a regular basis. I got persecuted with my wife when we were driving back down from Richmond. Police officers stopped me. Can you imagine that? Pulled us over. And the guy couldn't have been 12 years old. <laughs> Stood right outside. I looked at him and I said, you can't be. And I didn't say that, but I will not talk about it. Sure. And he said, I need to see your insurance cards, your driver's license, and whatever else you have to show me. Right? Right. Registration. So anyway, I took and I said, officer, why are you stopping me? I forgot to put that little sticker on my license plate. You know the one that you send away for the mm -hmm. Anybody ever do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody's ever done that? Uh, okay. I got caught. That guy's got good eyesight. How did he see that? But anyway, praise the Lord. I had it all taken care of. So uh, he, he said, have a good day. I said, you too, officer. Amen. Amen. Perplexed. Persecuted. But not for sake. God knew I messed up, didn't it, Joe? Right. I, mean, I know I don't always get my car inspected like I should. Do you? You know why I don't get inspected all the time like I should? Because I try to get it out of my own mouth. <laughs> Nobody ever thought of doing that. Either. You know, if you're supposed to get it inspected on, in December, I wait to January. And then that way I, I can go another year and a month. Amen? Right. <laughs> Cast down, but not destroyed. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do that. Just, yeah. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. I don't want to ask God to do that. Jesus said, I want to be manifested in your body. I designed your body for pain. I designed your body for persecution. I designed your body for love. That's what God is saying. He has made it possible for us to live a life, even though we may not always enjoy it, but to live a life of persecution, pain, and love. That's the way it is. And you know, we're always going to struggle. We're always going to have differences. We're always going to feel like, listen, nobody really cares about me, but the fact of the matter is, God does. And although we might have dark times in our life, although we might be facing death, we have a God that truly loves us. How do I know that? Because the Bible tells me so. Are you with me tonight? Don't leave here tonight discouraged. If God has laid something on your heart to do in your life, then do it. If God is not for it, now I'm not suggesting to sin, and I think you know that, but do what God has laid upon your heart. We talk about a challenge, amen? If God has challenged you to go ahead and be whatever in your life, then try your best to be whatever, amen? And add all those other things to it. It's hard to put our bodies through what we put it through sometimes. And believe me, I'm one that might know that, not to brag about it, but I know that the body uh, sometimes can take things far uh, more difficult than you can even believe. Right. My wife having five kids, going through operations. Some of you have been there. One day, some of you are going to face that. Right. One day, no matter how healthy you think you are, guess what? You can't stop age. Right. right. Amen. It rolls up on us. Am I right, Ken? I don't mean that disrespectfully. Amen. It rolls up on us. Right. Let's stand and close the prayer. I'm going to let you know. Take a nap.
Father, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your word. I pray that I might be an encouragement. But Lord, I know that you have designed us according to your will. Lord, thank you for the fact that you have designed us to be able to experience pain. Lord, even though we don't like it, we understand why we have it. If we could allow our bodies to be able to be the Christ that we're supposed to be in this world, then we will experience pain. Lord, we will also experience suffering and persecution that the Bible speaks about. But Lord, even in the midst of all those things, there is that word that you said so many times and brought to us is love. Lord, you love us, and you love us first. Lord, so that way we can love you. Now, Lord, let us leave this place tonight knowing that we have a God that loves us and cares about what's going on in our life. And that, Lord, you extend our love to be that person, Lord, that you wanted us to be in this life. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Number 489. Amen. Amen.